About two hours northeast of Cartagena, Barranquilla is the largest city in Caribbean Colombia. We split our stay between two neighborhoods. The first was at a Hojo hotel in a mostly residential area that was very walkable with a delightful number of trees. The biggest businesses were two sports stadia, a hospital, and all the support services needed for the hospital. including several restaurants that catered to patients and staff, serving typical traditional food. But one restaurant stood out. Only open for lunches, the chef elevated traditional cooking to a new level. There was also an artisanal market selling souvenirs and handicrafts, including traditional woven hats and bags that the Caribbean region is known for. Our second neighborhood was a much more modern and upscale residential area, quieter and very walkable, with some amazing street performers. The Magdalena River, Colombia's largest, flows north of Barranquilla, and the Gran Malecón is a major part of city life. Three kilometers long, with tons of restaurants, some live music, and parks of all kinds. It's packed on evenings and weekends. There isn't much in Barranquilla for tourists, but the Malecon helps make it a great place to live. A half hour taxi ride west, Puerto Colombia has Barranquilla's closest Caribbean beaches. Founded in the mid 1800s, its pier was once the largest in the world and until the early 20th century, it was Colombia's primary port of immigration. In an effort to match Barranquilla's Malecón de Rio, Puerto Colombia is developing their own Malecón. It's still a long way to go until there's anything close to the Barranquilla gem, but the plans do look impressive. One newly completed Puerto Colombia upgrade is the lighthouse. Inaugurated in December 2023 as the largest in Colombia. Powered by 55,000 LEDs, its beam can reach 35 kilometers away. At its base is a tribute to the history of Puerto Colombia and the immigrants who came to its pier, contributing to Colombia's national development. In the shadow of the new lighthouse, the old Puerto Colombia beach was packed with local families enjoying the Christmas vacation. Everyone seemed to be having a wonderful time, but for us, the painfully loud music that pervaded the beach made it completely uninviting to us, so we didn't bother to stick around much longer. Berliner's Tour is a local transport company that runs regular van service between Barranquilla, Cartagena, and Santa Marta. Santa Marta is about three hours northeast of Barranquilla. And the van drops off on the south side of town, where the nearby beaches are more developed than in Puerto Colombia. A pop-up shelter by the water will cost a few US dollars per hour. Farther back, you can get a couple of chairs for a few dollars a day with plenty of shade trees that are enjoyed by both man and beast. A 20 minute windy taxi ride over the Cerro Zeruma Pass takes you to Santa Marta proper. 
The town is surrounded by the foothills of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta mountain range and the famous Tirona National Park. Adventure tourism is a large part of the local economy. Vic took a day tour inside Tirona Park to Bahia Concha, a 20 minute walk through the forest. Limited access makes Bahia Concha pretty much the opposite of all the other beaches in the area. Founded in 1525 by Rodrigo de Bastidas, Santa Marta is Colombia's oldest continuously inhabited colonial city and the second oldest in South America after Cumana in Venezuela. There are some preserved areas in the historic center, including the Parque Bolivar and the Plaza de la Basilica. But unfortunately, most old buildings are in disrepair, including an 18th century mansion that's listed as a museum. There are charming cafes and spots for nightlife. But Santa Marta is more of a container port and cruise ship stop. So stay here to access the Tirona National Park and to catch the spectacular sunsets from the Malecon. Thank you.